This one's going to be named Olivia. It's a similar type of assessment, but this time it's for another student in third grade, but the key is it's in the middle of the year. So like the beginning of the year could have been September. Maybe the middle of the year is like January or something, and Olivia is getting graded. Now, it's the middle of the year, so I think we should anticipate or could expect that in the middle of the year, the student is going to be better when it comes down to speed, accuracy, and expression. Do, do me a favor, and everyone take one minute, and I want you to read over what it says about Olivia's oral reading fluency. Take a minute now. Do it on your own. Go. when you've had time to read this over. So let's see, it says here, uh, we're going to calculate her oral reading fluency, right? And it's calculating the number of words, and this is looking at her fluency and accuracy is the number of words correct. Um, it's the percent of words correct. Accuracy is the, the percent. So the percent that comes out of calculating uh, the number correct, right? over the, the number total, all right? And what is what is her accuracy? 97%, wow, Ooh, wow, that's, that is really good. Nice job, Olivia, awesome job, strength and accuracy. What about her speed? Or we could say speed is her rate, her reading rate. Now for her, her grade at this time of the year, 97%, uh, um, 90, 90, uh, 90 correct words per minute. Um, I'm sorry, 90, 90 words per minute would be, you know, a good reading rate, right? So let's see, what, what is she? 115. Wow. So she's up on her reading rate, right? Okay. So she's doing really good in reading rate. Her accuracy is very high. Now, what about expression? Or well, we think of that as her prosody her ability to pronounce words with the right inflection and intonation. Um, it does, it's hard to tell, you know, punctuation. You can't really tell uh, punctuation with these scores, except for the smoothness, maybe it's choppy, but you can definitely get a sense of, you know, um, um, her ability to pronounce words with the proper speed, expression, you know, things like phrasing and smoothness. These scores, why, I'm not so sure why they weren't included. Well, they were included here. Um, Jaden did a little bit better here. He just didn't uh, fix mistakes. But look at Olivia. Look at Olivia's scores here. Twos and threes out of fours. This means that it's really choppy. But wait a second. How is it possible for her to be really choppy but have high such high accuracy? I mean, her accuracy is amazing. So how's her? how is it so choppy? I don't get it. That has to do with how accuracy is calculated. When we calculate accuracy, the number correct over the number of total words, we do not count miscues that are self-corrected. So it's very possible, team, listen closely. Let's say there were 100, in calculating accuracy, there were 100 words. And let's say when Olivia did it the first time, let's say she got 80, 85 right, right? But... She self-corrected 12 times. What does that do? Well, we don't count miscute. We don't count when a student self-corrects. So even though when Olivia read the text, she, she, there, were, there were mistakes and she only got 85 right the first time, when we finally calculate it, she gets a 97 out of 100. So what is that? So that means that in order, in order for you to see, I'm trying to make this clear, in order for you to see 95, 97% accuracy and really, really choppy, two out of four is really, really choppy. That only happens when the student is self-correcting. Do you understand? Now, team, if that happens, if you observe something like this, you can already spot Olivia's strengths and her weaknesses. Her strength, if she's very accurate and very choppy, her strength is self-correction. She is using a variety of different uh, self-correcting strategies like context clues to fix mistakes. That's the strength. She is fixing a lot. She fixes mistakes. 
And that, so that means self-correction, she's probably using context clues to identify, uh, to clarify miscues, right? That's the only way you have high accuracy and it's very, very choppy, okay? It means that she must be self-correcting and using context clues to self-correct. Um, and on the flip side, she's very choppy. What could cause choppiness? Well, you always look, you always look to phonics first. And what patterns in phonics might be causing choppiness, right? So just by looking at these scores, we kind of have a sense already of what she's doing right and where she might need a lot of work. So right now, at first glance, within one minute, we could spot that maybe she uses self-correction to identify uh, mistakes, okay? Uh, using semantic and syntactical context clues. And maybe she shows so choppy because there's gaps in phonics. Okay, now, team, we will look at, at case study when we get to the essays. And the stuff that I'm doing with Jaden and Olivia will be a lot clearer. I just wanted to point this out. Um, you could have a student on your open response that appears to be fluent, right? But the reality is, is that they're not as fluent as the scores lend on. And, and really, all this tells us about this, uh, all this tells us about Olivia. It tells us that whatever text she was asked to read, this text whatever it is, it's a really good text for her to practice fluency, okay? These scores do not mean that she's fluent yet. I know it, it looks like she's fluent because she's doing really good here and really doing really good here, but these scores indicate that she's still, there's still things holding her back with that proper, that, that, that proper uh, prosody, okay? There's things still holding her back and making it choppy. But this text, whatever text it is that she's reading, this could be a good text for independent reading. She could use this text to practice her speed, accuracy, and expression and build it up over time, okay? All right, I just wanted to show you this stuff. Uh, let's keep going uh, with uh, thinking about fluency. This was These two case studies were looking at fluency and looking at a student's oral fluency. If you were ever given a rubric, how to interpret them. Um, we did that for Jaden. And for Lydia, now let's look at, and these are looking at, um, you know, just giving the information in sort of a data form. Let's look at a student's oral reading fluency and look how to see how they do uh, with a an oral reading fluency assessment. Okay, let's take.